Yo, man, what's going on, everybody, man? By today's title and thumbnail, you already know what to expect. I don't got to do too much talking. I got to do too much yapping. You already know what the vibe is, man. These are crazy things that are going to change our mind, change our reality, and possibly just even the way we think. You know, I tell y'all that all the time. Learning these things is honestly... It's eye open and it definitely make you question this thing that we know as life so make sure that you all got your eyes peeled and you hit that like button i'm telling you all the more likes this video get the high that will rank we'll break the algorithm and let's get it and let's go gotta get the headphones can't forget them let's get it let's go disney channel stars grown in the disney genetic engineering lab will be unveiled to the public right now tracy most of our viewers are already familiar with a lot of the products that have come out of the disney lab that. yes but how exactly do you create a hillary duff or a miley cyrus from scratch. Right. Well, we're right. going to find out exactly how it's done right now because joining us live. Nation at a rapid. Oh, right. Disney Channel stars grown in the Disney Genetic Engineering Lab will be unveiled to the public. Right. Now, Tracy, most of our viewers are already familiar with a lot of the products that have come out of the Disney know, Lab. Right. Yes. But how exactly do you create a Hillary Duff or a Miley Cyrus from scratch? Right. Well, we're going to find out exactly how it's done right now because joining us live from the Disney Lab is uh, one of their lead geneticists, Dr. Andrew Rourke. Welcome, Dr. Rourke. There's quite an operation you've got going on out well, there. Thanks, Jim. So the stars that we see on TV are actually grown right here? Uh, that's correct. They're, they're grown and uh, developed here. We engineer their brains for advanced singing and dancing capabilities, even posing for photos. Wow. By the time they grow to desired size, uh, these child stars are fully ready for the camera or the, the concert uh, tours or whatever Disney chooses to put them in. That is simply amazing. <laughs> now, how long does it take to actually create a star from scratch? Well, not very long at all. We use the exact same DNA structure for all of our stars. And we safe. simply tweak minor details like uh, hair color or skin tone. Right, yeah, we do have some footage here of some of the uh, well-known creations that have come out of your lab. Let's take a look. Yes, well, that's model 6831-A, publicly known as Mitchell Musso, standard male base with oh, a type wow. 3 skin pigmentation. Wow. And that's model 6831-B. We give them slightly thicker eyebrows and type 5 skin. Oh, so <laughs> it's sort of like putting a puzzle together. There. Exactly, exactly. Amazing. Okay. What in the... That, that's how what? I'm feeling right now. Is anybody else's brain doing fucking flips right now? I'm talking about backflips. This made my head hurt when I saw it. They putting it right out there to you. Putting it right out there to us. I feel like personally, even if this is a joke, I feel like that there's still some truth hidden behind this joke that they're trying to tell us. Identity confirmed. Mateo Torres, you are under arrest. Please put these on. Why? I didn't do nothing. I'm just going to work. Failure to comply will result in the use of non-lethal force. Oh, this Final is. warning. Please place your personal items into the box. This is a mistake. Can I speak to a human? Human? Please proceed to cell block C-14. Welcome to Correctacorp. We at Correctacorp Detention Facility want to make your stay the best it can no. be. No, thank you. Uh, I'm, I want to speak to a lawyer. Hi, I'm Ben Saperstein. And I am Halo. Do not worry. We are here to help. Wow. Oh, uh, uh, public defender. Please wait. There is an 89.5% chance you will be found guilty. Uh, guilty of what? This ruling will likely carry a sentence of 45 to 47 years in prison. I recommend that you plead guilty. A plea bargain may result in a lesser punishment of 5 to 7 uh, years. Plead guilty to what? Are you sure you want to plead guilty? No. To confirm your no, decision. No, I'm, I'm not guilty. Are you sure you want to plead not guilty? I not didn't do guilty. anything. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Please try again. I, I want to speak to a human being. Would you like to place a call? Yes. Who would you like to call? The, the chief of police. The, the human one. Please accept the terms and conditions in order to place your outgoing. Fine. Thank you for calling the LAPD. A human representative will be with you shortly. Please hold. Hey, what does that mean? You authorized the transfer of funds from your bank to place a call to... The, the chief of police. The, the human one. At $3 per minute for 114 minutes. What, you, what, you never said that. Are 
Are you going to sleep? Would you like the lights to be turned off for a more comfortable sleep? Yes. I'm sorry. You have insufficient funds to turn off the lights. Finding you have a lot of time on your hands? Learn a trade. Earn an hourly wage. Control of your life. Say handmade today. Handmade. There you are. I've been trying to call you. Hi. I. Where are you? Did you get a new apartment? No, no. I, I, I'm in jail. Dios mío. Mama, we don't have much time. It costs money to talk. Mateo. He's calling from jail. Jail? I, uh. What are you doing? I, there's been a mistake. I, I need money for a defense lawyer. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. I can pay back somehow. I just, I just need it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm gonna die here. I, I... Wow. You have insufficient funds. <sighs> oh fuck! Mateo Torres, please enter a plea for your trial. It hasn't even Looks been... like your trial is ready. I strongly recommend you plead guilty. A plea deal will result in a lesser punishment of five to seven years. Please say, I plead guilty to accept. Wait! Please state your plea. Wait! Sorry, I didn't get that. Do you want to enter a guilty plea? Please say, I plead guilty to accept. I plead guilty. Say yes to confirm your guilty plea. Not guilty! Not guilty! Oh Ready to win. God. Uh, hi. Can... Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Torres. I'm looking through your file, and frankly, it doesn't look good. I strongly suggest you take the plea deal that they've offered you. But I, I didn't do anything. Mr. Torres... Damn it, not again. What? Son, stay there. Just wait. No. What? So this is starting to confuse me now. We hope you enjoyed your stay. Please exit the room to start the discharge process. What? Sending you Just want to let you know you're fired. Torres, all of us here at Handmade hope this message finds you well. We wanted to remind you that Handmade is hiring. We yeah, offer you the opportunity to work from the comfort of your own charge. Man, just I wonder, is this like a show or something? Can anybody find what this is? Because I'm not gonna lie, this was completely interesting. And I am interested to see if it's more episode seasons or if this was just a short film. Uh, but I did enjoy this. So today we're announcing a federal lawsuit against Meta. Uh, Meta, of course, is the parent company of Instagram and Facebook for knowingly harming the mental health of young social media users. In short, wow. Meta intentionally designed wow. its social media platform to be more addictive to kids and young people. This federal lawsuit and others across the country are the result of a multi-year bipartisan investigation by nearly every attorney general across the United States. Now, one thing I want to mention up front, it's important, is that Meta is claiming that many of their internal documents that we have sought through the, through the process, including those showing that a new is harming kids, should be kept confidential. And we are asking the court, of course, to make those documents public. 
Oh my God. There is a lot of people that can agree right now. Like this social media stuff, it messes with your head, man. This is the insane privacy policy of TikTok that you agreed upon. Oh my God. I read TikTok's terms of service. Uh. I went down a TikTok rabbit hole yesterday. I'm going to read you this because this is so crazy. Is it good or bad? Bad. This is uh, from TikTok's privacy policy. All right. It said, uh, we collect information about the device you use to access the platform, mm -hmm. such as your IP address. This is really crazy. Identifiers for advertising purpose, device system, network type, device IDs, your screen resolution and operating system, app and file names and types. So all your apps and all your file names, all the things you have filed away on your phone, really? they have access to that. File names and types. Keystroke patterns or rhythms. So they're monitoring your keystrokes, which means they know every fucking thing you type. Wow. This wow. is the insane privacy policy of it, TikTok it, it, that you're you basically giving giving them a life until giving away your privacy. That that's that makes sense. Hey Shalom. Hey Shalom Cat Mosan Christ Quest. Check this out. Museum in Belgium, right? They put hands all over the building. You can never know. These are hands. He saw the damn devil. What? The whole building is a museum decorated with damn hands, chopped off hands of our forefathers and wow. mothers. Look at that. This is a museum. When we tried to go in there um, to have a look, the guy's trying to say that um, it's closed and the section that we want is closed, although everything else is open. He's saying the section that we want is closed for the day. Unbelievable. Check that out. Decorated with hands. Wow. Man, that is crazy. That boy King Leopold of Belgium was 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 completely that entire bloodline in general was just they was different. I don't think y'all really know who Big Brother is. It's not the cameras that's Big Brother. It's the device that you're watching me on that's Big Brother. Not only does iPhone and other devices take pictures of you every five seconds, they know when you go to the bathroom, when you have sex, when you get out your car, when you take a shower, when you walk your dog. It's called data or data logs, literally. And all these devices communicate with each other. Oh, you don't believe me? The cameras are just there for visual. Your phone updates and reports on you every second of the day and this is for educational purposes only because big brother is watching run that video comment big brother below. is watching Share this with someone you love can't respect what are you doing google we know that google is tracking us we agree to it when we set up our phones so we wanted to figure out what exactly google is learning about us throughout the day so here's what we're going to do. We have two identical phones. The only difference between these two phones is this one is in airplane mode. Both of the phones lack a SIM card, and they haven't been set up to access any Wi-Fi networks. So for all intents and purposes, these phones have no connection to a data network. We're going to keep them with us throughout the day. And while I travel around D.C., we're going to figure out just what Google is finding out about me. Our first stop, Sims Convenience Store, just outside our Fox Bureau, for a quick coffee. From there, we took a walk to the Capitol and took a quick walk around around the Senate office buildings and then decided to hop in a car and head around town. Hello. We're going to the Children's Hospital, please. To run our test, we had to do more than walk the block, so we took a tour around our nation's capital. First, due north to the Children's National Medical Center Hospital, then west to St. Albans School and the National Cathedral. Our tour around town was a 14-mile journey that lasted more than an hour. The entire time, the phones had no access to the Internet. Oh, my goodness. Not a Wi-Fi connection and not any cellular data service. It almost seemed quaint to assume that Google wouldn't even be able to collect data on me. Let's head back to the bureau, my friend. That church is beautiful. Google's business model is simple. Collect data on its users and then use that data to sell targeted ads. It's a business model called surveillance capitalism. But does wow. that critical data collection work even when your phones aren't connected? So we're back here at our Fox Bureau in D.C., and we've got both of our phones exactly how we left with them. The only difference, really, I snapped a couple of bad selfies at the National Cathedral. <laughs> 
but otherwise they have stayed in my pocket for the entire day. So let's find out what they know. This is our man in the middle device. It's basically a Wi-Fi network that these phones are going to connect to once we turn their Wi-Fi on. It's going to pass data through it on the way to Google. But on the way, we're actually going to get a copy of the same data that Google's going to get. We'll be able to decrypt it and then find out where we've been throughout the day. Within minutes, the numbers rolled in. The phone that wasn't on airplane mode registered more than 100 locations, 130 activities, and even 152 barometric readings. As soon as it hooked up to our Wi-Fi, it transmitted 300 kilobytes of data straight to Google. The phone even logged our exact locations, tracking us all around town, the Capitol, the hospital, the school, and the cathedral. Now, you may notice what's missing here is the exact route that we took. But it got that data, too. It knows when I got out of the car. The metadata has a time log down to the very second, tracking everything when they think that you're walking, riding, and yes, even getting out of the car. Okay, so you're thinking, this isn't a big deal. I'll just put my phone in airplane mode. Yeah, we thought of that, too. This is the other phone that we had with us that no SIM card also remained in airplane mode the entire time. Let's see what kind of data it captured. The phone with airplane mode activated actually logged more locations and activities than the other phone, and it also transferred hundreds of kilobytes of data to Google as soon as it was activated. The only thing that's missing from this map is our stop at the children's hospital, but it still knows we were there. There it is. Exiting vehicle, 100% accuracy. Through complicated user agreements and free software, Google gets users to sign away their privacy for nothing. They're even following you in the places that most people would expect total privacy. Government buildings, a children's hospital, a private school, a church. Every move you make, every step you take, Google is watching you. Wow, I don't think it's just Google. I know a lot of people can agree. I feel like that it's also Apple. Sure he's gonna be cool with me just riding up on his ass and they're gonna rat us out. I say we keep moving. Tyrell waits for his moment and drives inside. I make sure we've got cameras rolling. This place isn't only the largest underground facility in the area. They say it's the largest in the world. Look at this. They got room for two lanes of 18 wheelers. The road literally goes on for miles. Look, there, it's branching off again. Who knows where that leads? Maybe even to the Huff House. Do you think they're watching us right now? Yeah. And this thing's hooked up to railroad, too. This facility covers 50 million square feet, all underground, all climate controlled. They got warehouses for food, data, all sorts of things, offices, manufacturing, even underground farming and stockpiles of crude oil. Oh yeah, there's plenty of space to live in. You can fit thousands of people here, if you want to save that many. Well, you could definitely hide out from the world above. Oh, you stuff like this, no doubt about it. I never knew places like this existed in the world. Oh yeah, this is scale. You can store anything now. This is huge. This is an underground city. Wow, that is crazy. They build little things like that just for truck drivers to go through, but just imagine the ones that they have that nobody really know of but them. They really do just love shoving it right in our face now, don't they? Or as many speculate, they really do just love shoving it right in our face now, don't they? Or as many speculate, they have to. They have to tell us what they're doing before they do it. How many times now is it that the Simpsons have literally portrayed massive events, world-changing events? in their cartoon episodes, many of which these episodes air decades and decades before the event actually happens. 30, maybe more. Well, the Simpsons aren't the only ones letting us know years in advance what to expect. Like this magazine cover from The Economist titled A Rough Guide to Hell. Ooh, it's a special holiday double issue. Jeez, thanks. Anyone else think that it's strange that it's their holiday issue that they chose to make completely satanic with devils and hell and pitchforks and, yeah, tis the season? But before I walk you through this cover of this magazine, this eerie projection, prediction, whatever you want to call it, of a magazine cover, I'd like to introduce you to the owners. 
or partners, partial owners of the magazine called The Economist. The Rothschild. Shocked face. And before we start delving into the different specific items on this cover, I'd like to draw your attention to the year that this was published. 2012. Christmas double issue. Again, yeah, that's very Christmassy. And the fact that that cover was made 11 years ago? One specific item on this cover will shock you. And so I'll get to that last. But on this cover, they outline the seven deadly sins. And some very familiar faces along the way, which again, we will go through one by one. Let's start with Lust. I'm not really sure who this guy is, so if any of you guys might recognize him, please let me know. And since Auntie's never really been huge on politics, I had to enlist the help of Uncle Mike for recognizing some of these faces. So I might not even say their names right, but Uncle Mike thinks that this is the General David Petraeus? Petraeus? I don't know. We bring you Lust, the first sin that we're going through of the seven. Coming in at a hot second, we have Gluttony. Apparently, America and oil. Again, politicians and politics are my weak spot. I thought that might be Pelosi. <laughs> I don't know. But Uncle Mike thinks it's the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel. Sloth is laziness, especially in things like business. Moving on to greed, we have bankers going in what looks like mine carts for a coal mine, maybe. But what I find suspicious is the mountain cave, the opening of the cave. Seems to look an awful lot like, I don't know, the mouth of a giant. Many of us are aware that a lot of our mountains do look like petrified giants now, don't they? Food for thought. And now there's Envy. Had to enlist Uncle Mike's help here too, but he thinks this is a French leader, Macron. We have no idea who that is. Maybe Mitt Romney. And there's the old Republican elephant next to the potential Mitt Romney. Giving the old side eye to Obama himself. Which brings me to Obama. This one is interesting to me because the one sin that they chose to use Obama for to represent was the same sin, the one sin that was ultimately the cause of Lucifer's demise. The one sin that got Lucifer booted out of heaven? Pride. Yeah. Which if you saw my video about the Antichrist a few weeks ago, you might understand why Auntie is now scratching her head. I mean, isn't every American president full of pride? So why Obama? Right now, more than ever, people are trying to figure out who is the Antichrist. Because it does feel like we are apparently in those times, the end days. So people are trying like crazy to decipher and figure out who the Antichrist might be. I did a video a few weeks ago that explained perhaps Jesus actually gave us his name in the Bible in Luke 10, 18. This was Jesus speaking. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Other translations are, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Now remember guys, the Bible has been translated from Greek into English. And Yeshua, Jesus, actually spoke Aramaic, the oldest form of Hebrew. So what are the Hebrew words for lightning and heaven? Now remember, with heaven, they actually consider that great heights. Great heights of worship is the same as heaven. Well, let's check it out. The Hebrew word for lightning, Barak. Oh my. And the Hebrew word, you guessed it, for great heights, also meaning place of worship, like heaven, Bama. And with Hebrew, they use vowels like U or O. That would be a U or an O as conjunctives to tie two words together. Knowing that, if we were to read that scripture the way that Jesus would have said it in Aramaic, and I beheld Satan, Barak Obama, did Jesus literally give us the name of the potential Antichrist? It does seem odd that they would choose him out of all of history that to represent odd. the one sin of Satan, pride. Now moving on to the one that's gonna make your skin crawl. Full body chills, and not in the good way. The last of the seven sins, wrath. Guys, remember this magazine cover was made in 2012, their Christmas edition. Yeah. So how is it possible that Wrath not only is portrayed by two people that is all up in the news right now, but also something very, very eerie depicted in this picture as well, making it almost impossible to cite it off as hmm, coincidence. There it is, folks, Wrath. And don't worry, I'll zoom it in a little bit better so you can see it. But this one on his helmet says Hamas, and clearly you can see that is Netanyahu with the Israeli flag on his. The part for me at least that is the most bone chilling about this depiction of Hamas and Israel, Netanyahu, see it clearly says Hamas, is this, the fact that they are hang gliding, just like they did when they invaded that concert, the concert out in the desert where Hamas parachuted in, invading an open area concert a brutal attack on innocent festival goers in Israel. Doesn't that seem oddly suspiciously specific? 11 years later, 
But outside mm. of the seven deadly sins on this magazine cover, there's more. So let's run through that too. Here we have India and China shoveling coal. All while Satan himself stands here next to this machine. What does that say? Climate change? That's odd. But not as odd as Satan himself holding this exact magazine in his hand. Same cheerful Christmas edition as well. We have multiple little devils here on computers, on the internet. And one, it says Hacker Center. Hmm. This one took me a second because at first I thought it was Ronald Reagan, but now I have to say, guys, it's obviously Simon Cowell. Because look at the X's, the three judges, and there's a devil there singing for mm. Mr. Cowell. We've got the apparent downfall of America, Wall Street, the capital, and what appears to be ancient Greece, where democracy was born. And in hell, we also, it looks like, have the parliament. And right there is the center of the government of England itself. And it appears the whole dang thing will be down there in hell. <laughs> Another of England's finest appears to be heading that way as well. British journalists. We know that tabloids can be brutal, but nowhere near as bad as the ones in Britain. Whew, they're rough. But don't worry, they'll have company. Again, I had to enlist the help of Uncle Mike. I mean, not with that one. That one I knew real quick. Hello, Putin. There's old Kim Jong-un with his little missiles that he likes to play with. Omar Gaddafi, Iranian president. Uncle Mike had to help me with this one. Someone's going to have to help me with the name because I know I'm going to butcher it. Mohammed. Ahmadinejad, Ahmadinejad. And according to Uncle Mike, that is the Syrian president, Assad. Yeah, so there you have it, guys. The Economist. Christmas, holiday edition from 2012. Named A Rough Guide to Hell. Wow, just wow. Wow. Here's the whole cover again for you if you'd like to pause screenshot so you can look at it yourself. The fact that this came out in 2012 and what is going on now, like she said, 11 years later, you look at this image and you can consider it to something that is going on in today's generation. T-Mobile is updating the terms and conditions and they're, go is updating the terms and conditions and they're going to be fining us thousands of dollars for rules that we break. Well, that's what some people say. Now, Laura is not the only one who took this information and ran with it. There's another person I'm gonna tag below in the comments. Please be nice to them. However, I'm gonna explain exactly what's happening. It doesn't necessarily apply to you, the consumers. It applies more to the people who are sending messages out to consumers, the advertisers, the marketers. And for that, we have to talk about SHAFT. Now, SHAFT is not what you think. It's an acronym that stands for sex, hate, alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. This is a portion of guidelines that marketers and advertisers must follow when they send out mass texts to a lot of people on the same network. Now, a lot of people don't read this carefully. Shaft guidelines should be taken seriously by anyone using SMS to communicate to their consumers to ensure they are compliant with the CTIA. The CTIA is a trade association, and it represents the wireless communications industry in the United States of America. They also operate certification programs for the wireless industry. Now that entity, as well as the FTC and FCC, they make sure that consumers are receiving advertisements or solicitations from other people in a way that's not breaking any laws. Now, a lot of people don't know all that information that I just gave to you, which is why a lot of you are gonna be confused when people start making claims such as this. T-Mobile's updating the terms and conditions. They're gonna be looking through all of your text messages. And if they find anything that is talking about hate, drugs, sex, alcohol, firearms, and tobacco, they're gonna fine you. And to Laura and to the people that I tagged in the description, please make sure you're reading the fine print. I have one more thing to show you, but if you're not following me yet, hello, my name is Sean. I read the fine print and the terms and conditions so that you don't have to, because y'all would get confused by these people. I don't. But when it comes to these tiers that people are talking about that you're going to be fined for, no one looks at the fine print, especially the hyperlinks. All these updates apply to the T-Mobile commercial messaging network. If you're one of those entities, not the individuals receiving the messages, there are specific things that are assigned to you, like seven to 10 digit phone numbers, and they're tracked by T-Mobile themselves. Now, if you're one of those business entities, the T-Mobile code of conduct applies to you, which is confusing a lot of people. They state that this guide is for high integrity, high quality business communications, not personal text messages from one person to another, meaning your first amendment is not going to be violated. I really wish more people would read the fine print before they just ran with the video or just made clickbaity content in the first place, because now you're liable for T-Mobile coming after you for these false claims. Wow, I mean, I guess that really don't apply to me, but anybody that might be in a situation like this, you might be up for some money.